Hi, this is JP from No The Lights Over Arkham. Welcome to another unexpected church video where I play an investigator from a campaign using only the cores that come in the deluxe box on, or in the newer expansions, in this case in the expansion investigator box. So uh, I always choose an investigator that comes in that campaign cycle. So uh, this time we are playing the Scarlet Keys campaign investigator and I have decided to uh, do this with Daryl Simmons. Uh, Daryl seems like a really potent uh, true solo investigator and I am using only cards from this uh, cycle's investigator expansion. So all the cards that come in the Scarlet Keys investigator expansion and also two uh, copies of the core set or if you are using the revised core set then one of those is enough but uh, first off um, we are playing the first scenario of the campaign as a demonstration on how the deck works this series is uh, designed to uh, represent the, a limited uh, card pool or simulate it so that I don't have all the cards available uh, in the uh, game at my use so this is good for newer players that are just getting into the game after the core box and getting the first expansion for uh, which they are interested in so uh, let's hop over to arkhamdb.com and see what kind of deck I built for Daryl okay and here is the Daryl deck I built for this playthrough so this is intended to be a uh, deck that you can start the campaign with. Uh, I, I'm not thinking about the upgrades that much when building this because there are some uh, upgrades that cost a lot of XP that you could use so uh, all the cards are here to give you a good all-around deck that can investigate and can manage enemies. Uh, this deck has two knives in it. Knife is not a good card, but there aren't that many good cards for this build. And this is basically a placeholder for the neutral card that comes in this box, which is the um, hyperactive shotcaster or something like that. But uh, once you get 4 XP, upgrade to that, and that will be your weapon of choice because you can use any uh, skill to use it. So with Daryl's 5 intellect you can fight with your intellect with that weapon. So that is a really good upgrade once you get some experience. Uh, then uh, I added one copy of pocket multi-tool into the deck. Usually if you have these uh, customizable cards you should up, uh, add two of them but I think this is just uh, here because I like the card, it, it is good without any experience, it will give plus one to any skill test. So after some upgrades you might get better results with it and maybe want to take another one. But at this point I'm sticking to one because of limited deck space. Uh, flashlights are here just to uh, help out with high shroud investigation or uh, lower a two shroud investigation. Uh, or shroud value to zero to make you succeed more. Uh, Idol of uh, Xanatos is here because it's a newer card and this helps you mitigate any damage if you run into getting a lot of damage. So you can just uh, discard cards to cancel uh, damage and horror dealt to you. Uh, Leather Coat is another good card for Daryl. Uh, because Daryl has only 6 health, so plus 2 health from the leather coat is good. Uh, Dr. Milan Christopher is a staple from the core box, and I am playing this playthrough without any taboo, so uh, what, it, what you see is what you get with uh, Dr. Milan Christopher this time. And he also boosts your main stat of intellect to 6 if you get him into play, which is really strong. There is one copy of Stray Cat, just in case if we hit a situation we really need to uh, pass an evade or evade an enemy. Uh, then uh, hyper, uh, hyperical, hi empirical hypothesis 
this year just to accumulate some evidence onto a card uh, so that uh, Daryl's ruined film signature weakness won't hit that hard. So you can at least chuck some uh, evidence for this if you uh, draw it. Uh, hyper awareness is good because it boosts your two uh, strong stats to even more heights so you can pass those evasions to uh, mitigate enemies and uh, intellect when you are investigating. End of the Road is a newer card from the Scarlet Keys campaign and uh, uh, it is a strong one when you hit the last um, agenda of the scenario. So you will draw a card, gain one resource and gain one additional action, uh, but you remove it from the game so you can't reappear it. But there are two copies of this in the deck. Also it's a fast action so that's really strong and costs zero. Uh, Mind over matter is a staple for every uh, investigator that is not good at fighting or evading but has a high intellect. So with this uh, I can pass fight checks if I need to and um, uh, evade checks if I need to. And evasion and fighting might come into use in some situation in, in the Scarlet Keys when dealing with the concealed mini cards. Uh, working a hunch is there just to give you more momentum. Uh, it is a fast uh, event so you can grab some clues with it and just keep going and won't lose any momentum of your actions. Uh, deduction is another one which is a staple for everyone playing a true solo with a seek, uh, seeker access investigator. So always have that. Uh, then uh, perception just to get some card draw and uh, higher intellect for when you need it unexpected courage uh, I <laughs> have added this to every deck that I have built for this uh, This um, Series and hence the name unexpected courage. It is a really good card for these uh, Decks with the limited card pool then uh, we drew uh, weakness from the a weakness pool of uh, the core set and the Scarlet Keys Investigators and it is Mob Enforcer. So hopefully we have enough resources to deal with this guy if we run into him. But that is basically the deck. Um, let's hop back over to the scenario. Okay, <clears throat> and we are set up here so um, we start uh, the game uh, in the riddles and rain scenario from the rainy London streets and there are a couple of clues there so we need to get two clues to advance so hopefully we get some clue tech uh, that will accelerate us by getting those clues fast enough and we can uh, start the scenario with a running start but uh, that is enough chalk uh, let's see how this uh, playthrough goes with this deck so let's get started Okay, and we are ready to start, so let's draw first our opening hand. And one thing to mention, uh, in the setup I decided to take the, or uh, in the intro, I decided to take the option that removes one of these uh, tablet tokens from the back and adds a Elder Thing token, so uh, that is that. So we don't have any uh, tablets in the back, we have two skulls and two Elder things, and uh, the sta we are playing on standard difficulty. Uh, our goal is to grab two clues, so let's look at the act. So, as a group, spend the required number of clues to advance before the agenda advances, and the agenda only has a, a threshold of two doom, so we need to be fast. Okay, uh, we have shuffled uh, the encounter deck earlier, and we have now the encounter deck uh, or our player deck shuffled. So let's draw our opening hand of five cards and see what we get. Uh, we redraw the weakness, so we get lucky, which I forgot to mention is a staple for survivors. Really good. Flashlight, unexpected courage, uh, Doctor Milan Christopher, and deduction. I think we can manage without the flashlight. And we'll keep the rest. So we'll draw a uh, flashlight again. End of the road. Well, this is not good before uh, we are at the last agenda. But it is what it is. So we'll uh, sh shuffle the mulligan cars back into the deck and get started. 
I will be playing Dr. Milan Christopher straight away as my first action and doing double investigation. I will save the deduction for later, just in case I hit a high uh, fraud location, which I need some boost for my, my investigation. So we are playing the uh, Dr. Milan Christopher first action. And now our intellect is six, which is really good. Second action will be investigation. So we are six versus one. And um, just to tell what Daryl does is that uh, we begin our game with Daryl's Kodak in play. It is over here. Then uh, fast action during a skill test at your location. Spend one evidence from an asset you control. Reduce the difficulty of this test by two limit once per test. And uh, Elder Sign effect is plus one, place one evidence on an asset you control. And uh, Daryl's Kodak is a uh, uh, free triggered ability after an enemy or treachery enters play, exhaust Daryl's Kodak. Place one resource from the token pool on that enemy or treachery as evidence. After you discover any number of clues, move that many evidence on enemies or treacheries at location, a location or not at any location to Daryl's Kodak. There are a lot of uh, treacheries that uh, are attached to locations in this campaign, so Daryl's Kodak will work pretty well with those. So you place uh, evidence onto uh, a treachery on a location, investigate it and get that as an evidence, so that should be good. So, six versus one. Uh, we will investigate. Let's see how this goes. So, first draw is minus one, we grab one, two. Last action, we will uh, investigate again, six versus, oh yeah, and uh, after you successfully investigate, gain one resource, and remember, we are playing uh, without taboo, so Dr. Milan Christopher won't exhaust for these tests. Elder side, we get to place one evidence onto Daryl's Kodak. Or an asset we control, and I decide to put it on the Daryl's Kodak. And we get the clue. So that is that we will immediately advance. So, movement in the dark. We won't be reading any fluff text this uh, playthrough. Uh, so, put the set aside Kensington Gardens, Westminster Abbey, and Big Ben locations into play. The lead investigator draws the set aside Red Glove Man enemy and resolves his concealed keyword. Spawn the Red Glove Man in the shadows. Uh, take this mini uh, his mini card and one decoys per investigators. Shuffle them face down and put them into play, divided as evenly as possible among the locations nearest to the lead investigator. Uh, advance the agenda directly to agenda 2A. Do not resolve agenda 1B. So let's do that setup now. So we have Kensington Gardens, which comes here, Big Ben, and Westminster Abbey. Those are now in play. Then we get the Red Club Man into the shadows. Here is the shadows. So enemies in the shadows are not in at any location. Uh, they are in the shadows and some cards or card abilities might affect us while there is an enemy in the shadows. We can't do anything to enemies in the shadows without some card text telling us to uh, do something to them. And uh, then uh, we get the Red Club Man mini card and one decoy per investigator. We shuffle them. So I'm just doing a quick shuffle and uh, uh, closest location without a mini car to our investigator is this one. Then uh, we'll place one over here. So those two locations have mini cars now. That is everything. And uh, now the game is afoot. So objective: chase down the mysterious figure before the agenda advances. If an investigator engages the red glove man, advance. And that is everything we do on this round. No enemy actions. We go to upkeep, we draw a card, and it is the ruined film. Immediately, we lose one resource, and we have to take three horror because uh, 
uh, we can't remove any more evidence. Well, uh, we can put one here. And we'll put two here. So that was a not not a good start, but at least that card is now out of our deck, so we don't have to worry about um, worry about that anymore. And I forgot to add one resource when I investigate the second time successfully, then we get one resource at the end of the round, so that is that round, let's go to the next round. Okay, and um, uh, one thing I forgot to do was add one here, and we were actually investigating uh, against the Shroud of Two, because this is one plus uh, the number of the current uh, Act. So now it is a Shroud of Tree location. Okay, we add a Doom. Oh yeah, we advance this straight to Agenda 2A. So now we have a uh, Threshold of 4. Uh, when this Agenda advances, move all Doom on it to the next Agenda. So we add one Doom there. First encounter card of the game is False Lead. If you have no clues, this gets Search. Uh, we draw a new one. Hunting Shadow. You must either choose one, spend one clue or take two damage. Uh, no option there. We have to take two damage. So we are taking damage left and right, which is not good, but hopefully we can manage. Uh, that is the end. Uh, Mythos phase done. We'll go to the investigation phase. Uh, first action, we'll move to uh, Westminster Abbey. Uh, there is uh, one clue here. And I'll just grab that, because we need clues later on in the scenario. So, 6 versus 1. Uh, auto fail, well, we'll do a second try. So, 6 versus 1. 0, we'll grab a clue, we'll gain a resource from Milan. That is our round, no enemy actions, we'll go to upkeep, be ready, draw mob enforcer. Well. Good thing we have cash to deal with that guy, and we gain a resource, so that is that round. We are drawing only weaknesses, apparently. Well, no more weaknesses in the deck, so that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a Doom. Encounter card is Locked Door. Place to attach to the location with the most clues, and without the locked door attached. So, I will place an... Oh, yeah. Uh, after an enemy or treachery and display exhaust terror's code. So we exhausted terror's code at last at the end of last round. Uh, so actually, this guy has the evidence. We can't exhaust it again because it's exhausted when we place this underneath here. But it, uh, it's okay. We'll get rid of this. So that was the mythos phase. First action is to pay up the mob enforcer. I'm just double checking as you score. Them. Okay, uh, let's back up. I forgot I won't get the uh, evidence if I defeat it. So we'll save the Kodak for this. So we'll place that uh, evidence over there, but we'll still pay off the mob enforcer to get rid of that. Second action, we'll move to Big Ben. Uh, four shroud, one clue per investigator, so one. And uh, last action, I think we'll grab this clue from here. I will just go six versus four. If I need it, I have a lucky in hand. Minus three, so we need the lucky. Uh, we are failing by one, so we'll play lucky to succeed by one. So we'll grab the clue, and it is a victory point location, and we get a resource. And that is our turn. No enemy actions, we'll go to upkeep. This readies. And... And we get this as an evidence. It doesn't need to be uh, 
at that location or or not at okay it needs to be this location or not any location so we didn't get that but it is what it is so we draw a card we get uh, working a hunch and we gain a resource so that is that round let's go to the next round we add a doom three or four encounter card is uh, Heavy Rain. Test willpower 3. For each point you fail by, you must either take one horror or place one of your clues to onto your location. I am committing the unexpected courage to this test, so... Uh, we are... 4 versus... Uh, 4 versus 3. So hopefully we can succeed or not uh, fail by a lot. It is a 0, so we pass. And now we have to start revealing uh, these mini cards. So uh, yeah, we'll just investigate this location. I am investigating uh, six versus four zero, so we get to reveal one mini card. And it is the Red Glove Man, so the Red Glove Man engages us. And when we remove the last enemy from the shadows, all of the concealed mini cars go away because there are only decoys left. So we get to advance this. The chase is on, a lot of fluff left. So set the Red Glove Man aside out of play, put the set aside Tower Bridge and the Tower of London locations into play. Shuffle the set aside Crimson Conspiracy and Outsiders Encounter sets into the Encounter deck along with the Encounter Discard pile. Advance the Agenda directly to Agenda 3A. Do not resolve Agenda 2B. Okay. And now I have to double check. So this says... So we advance, so this go to the next, so this goes away, this goes here, so uh, we have a shroud of, oh no, a doom threshold of 9 now, and uh, we have to put the tower bridge and the tower of London locations into play. And the Red Club Man goes out of play. Then we have to shuffle uh, these two encounter decks into the encounter deck along with the encounter discard pile. <coughs> oh, sorry. And uh, because we successfully investigated, we get a, uh, a a resource from uh, Dr. Milan Christopher. So, as you can see, Dr. Milan Christopher is quite, quite good an ally from the core set. So, there is no uh, question why uh, he is on the taboo list. And now, and uh, with the taboo, he would exhaust every time you get the resource. So you can't get multiple resources during your turn. Okay. So, just shuffling a bit more, so that is enough shuffling. That is uh, that action. Then, uh, second action, we'll move here, we'll ignore this, we'll go to Kensington Gardens, and there is uh, one clue here, and uh, we'll grab that later. So. That is our turn, no enemy actions will go to upkeep, we get another uh, end of the road, and we gain a resource. So that is that round, let's go to the next round. Okay, so we add a doom, so 4 of 9 encounter card is a locked door. Attached to the location with the most clues and without the locked door attached. Attached location cannot be investigated. Uh, action test the combat 4 to break down the door or agility 4 to pick the locks. If you succeed, discard the locked door. 
So I think we are just uh, working a hunch and uh, grabbing this clue without investigating. So uh, I added the connection locations here. So uh, we can't move to the Tower of London without paying two clues per investigator's group. And we need um, three clues to advance. So we need more clues, definitely. So, for, uh, fast action is to pay to, to play the working hunch to grab this clue without spending any actions. Then, actually, we play, uh, placed an evidence onto this card, and now we get this as an evidence because we uh, successfully. Uh, we discovered any number of clues, so we get this uh, evidence onto our card. Okay, first action. We'll move here. Second action, we'll move to the tower bridge. One clue here. Uh, last action, we will investigate. And I am investigating uh, six versus four. Minus one, we'll grab this clue, we'll get a resource with Milan. And that is our turn. Uh, there is an action here. So action, maybe there is another way. Test the uh, willpower or intellect five. If you succeed, put the set aside traitor's gate location into play. I think we'll just ignore that because I have played this before and know that the next test we need to make is not one that we can easily pass. So if we went to the traitor's gate, we would have need need to have a high agility or combat to do that. So we'll just next round pay to go here. But that is our turn. No enemies will go to upkeep. We draw, making preparation. So max two uh, dilemma per round. Choose two skills. Uh, until the end of the investigation phase, each investigator gets plus one to each of the, those skills and minus one to each other skill. So we'll pick uh, willpower and uh, intellect. So those are plus one and our uh, rest of our stats are minus one until the end of the next investigation phase. And uh, we'll gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add another Doom. Five of nine. Encounter card is a Coterie Agent. After Coterie Agent enters the shadows, place one Doom on it. When Coterie Agent is, ex is exposed, discard it. So this has concealed of two, meaning that we first search the minicard uh, Coterie Agent B which is here, then uh, conceal 2 means there are two decoys. Then we shuffle these together and start placing cards. And we'll place one here, one here and one here. Okay, and this goes into the shadows and has one doom on it. So we are at six doom now. And that is the mythos phase, so we actually get to exhaust this and put this on, oh, not this, but this token here. Okay, and the uh, first action is to move in here and we'll pay to like so. And uh, three shroud, one clue. After you end your turn at the Tower of London, you must either lose two resources or each enemy in the shadows attacks you. Uh, we will happily pay those resources, but first I will investigate six versus uh, seven versus three. Skull, uh, skull is a minus one, minus three instead if you have two or more clues. We have two or more clues, so it is a minus three, but we still succeed. We'll grab clue. Uh, we will get a resource. Then we get to advance. 
we are at the Tower of London, we have the three clues. Uh, he's here! Put the set aside tower prison location into play, and that's the set aside red eye of raven's key to the tower prison, not controlled by anyone. Move all concealed mini cards in play to the tower prison. Draw the set aside the red club man enemy and resolve his concealed keyword, putting all of those concealed mini cards into play at the tower prison. And then caught red handed, the red club man gains action parlay test. Uh, willpower or intellect 5 to interrogate the red cloth man. If you succeed, place one resource on him. Stop the red cloth man from stealing the eye of ravens. If he is defeated, or if there are one two per investigator resource, one one resource on him advance per investigator. Okay, uh, so we get the tower prison. Uh, red glove man enters the shadows all of these and We'll put the red glove man and one decoy more here shuffle all of these together And we'll just put them I'll just put them up here. So they are all in the tower prison just to be clear. Then, uh, it is a fourth location with two clues. Uh, while investigator's tower prison is performing a skill test, spend one clue. That investigator gains plus two skill value to this test. Post when a concealed mini card would enter play anywhere other than tower prison, put it into play in the tower prison instead. So, we have two clues here which we want to get because it's a victory point location. So I am spending one clue, I am investigating, and I am, as my last action, and I am committing the deduction to this test. And... Uh, yeah, so we are investigating uh, six, uh, seven, this is still the same turn, so seven, eight versus... Uh, 10 versus 4. So it is a minus 1. We'll grab two clues from here. And that, and we gain a resource. So that is everything we can do this round. We will go to upkeep. We get working a hunch and gain a resource. So working a hunch works really well with the mini cards. So we can. Just uh, working a hunch and grab one of those mini cards away as a fast action. And uh, we're ready that. So uh, that is everything uh, now. Uh, making preparations is not uh, in effect anymore. But that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add another doom. So now we are at uh, 7 of... Uh, nine, yes, seven of nine. Encounter card is Hunting Shadows. Uh, take two damage or lose one of your clues. I think I can afford losing one clue at this moment, so we'll lose a clue. That is the middle space done. We'll start by working a hunch to reveal one, and I'll just start from this end. And it's the Red Glove Man. So we are super lucky with this. <clears throat> so we get the Red Glove Man. And oh yeah, this is uh, connect uh, attached to here. But we get the Red Glove Man into play. And uh, first action. So we need to put one, uh, succeed by one on this test. So. Uh, see so now I will do the parlay intellect test and I will spend one uh, evidence which will uh, raise my skill value by two no the difficulty of the test lowers by two so it is a test of three now intellect Three, and we are uh, five, six, and I'm spending one clue, so seven, 
and I can spend multiple. So I am nine versus three. So uh, we should be really succeeding if we don't pull an auto fail. Okay. So uh, nine versus three. And it is a zero, so we get to place one resource onto the Red Club Man. So, objective. Uh, stop the Red Club Man from stealing the Eye of Ravens if he is defeated or if there are one two uh, resources per investigator on him. Advance. The plot is foiled. If there, is, uh, there are one resource per investigator on the Red Club Man. Uh, the man stops and faces you, seemingly intrigued by your line of questioning. Although in the darkness you cannot study his expressions. Interesting, he whispers. Very interesting. His voice has a strange, uneven quality, like he is testing the tone of each word, like one unaccustomed to speaking. Add the red glove man to the victor display resolution 2. So, uh, victor display there. We get the resolution too, so um, that went pretty well. So we have a lot of love text in the resolution too, but I won't read that. Each investigator earns experience equal to the victory X value of each card in the victory display. So we have one, two, three, four experience, and then uh, we get to choose an investigator to get gain control of the Eye of Ravens, which we do. And uh, now we are the key uh, keeper of that key. Uh, then um, we mark into our campaign log that you haven't seen the last of the Red Club Man. Then we mark one time into our campaign log. And we proceed to interlude the foundation where we get to meet the foundation and continue the campaign from there. But the main thing is that we managed to get uh four resources from this uh, no no four uh experience from this uh, scenario so the first upgrade i would do would be to uh add four experience onto the or uh, change the hyper uh, hyper physical shotcaster in into the deck instead of the knife and uh, knives and then uh, upgrade those that I can fight with my intellect which would make um, Daryl a really potent fighter with the high intellect that he has so uh, yeah this should be turned over so that was the riddles and rain scenario with the limited card to Daryl Simmons uh, hope you guys got some good ideas on how this scenario functions and how this deck functions uh, I'll add the deck list of course into the video description if you want to try out the deck for yourself in this campaign if you don't have uh, all of the uh, carpool available and want to try this out or just try a limited uh, carpool investigator so thanks for watching and until next time